Here's an atom of lithium. We can see that there are, in the nucleus, three protons plus four neutrons to give us the total mass of seven. Uh, again, we have three protons, which is provided to us that information by the atomic number. And we can see that we have an electrically neutral atom here because the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. We see that here, and we see that also here. When lithium forms ionic compounds with nonmetallic elements, it will do so by donating a single electron. The electron that it donates or gives up is the electron in the second energy level. And we can see by removing that electron that we produce an ion that has a plus one charge. In fact, all of the alkali metals, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, these will all form plus one ions by donating the electron in their highest energy level. Here's a model of a beryllium atom. We can see the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus is giving us the total mass of nine AMUs. The number of protons is four. That's coming from the atomic number. The number of neutrons is five. The number of electrons is four, which matches the number of protons producing an electrically neutral atom. When beryllium, and in fact all of the other alkaline earth metals, react with nonmetallic elements to form ionic compounds, they will do so by donating two electrons. They'll donate the electrons in their highest energy level. For beryllium, that's level two. So when beryllium gives up two electrons, we can see that it's going to form a plus two charge. Beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, all of the alkaline earth metals will form ions that have a positive two charge. Here we see a model of an oxygen atom, which has a total of eight protons, eight neutrons, and eight electrons. And this is an electrically neutral oxygen atom. When oxygen uh, will react to, with metallic elements to form an ionic compound, uh, what's going to happen now is a little bit different than what happened with metallic elements. Nonmetallic elements are going to gain electrons rather than losing electrons when they form ionic compounds. So we can see that oxygen actually has two remaining spots for electrons to be placed. So when oxygens are gaining electrons, and this is what happens in the formation of ionic compounds, we can see that oxygen will form an ion that has a negative two charge. Uh, sulfur will also form an ion that has a negative two charge, as will selenium. Here is a neutral fluorine atom. We can see that it has a stable nucleus with a total of nine protons and 10 neutrons. Uh, the total number of electrons is nine to match the number of protons. When fluorine atoms will react with metallic elements to form ionic compounds, again, they're going to become stabilized by adding electrons, which were donated by the metallic element. So in this case, if we add one electron, we can see that we'll be able to fill that second energy level, and this will produce an ion that has a minus one charge. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, these are all called uh, the halogens. They'll all form ions that have a negative one charge when they're forming ionic compounds. Uh, please note, as we look at the nonmetallic elements, the halogens will form ions with a negative one charge. The oxygen family will form ions with a minus two charge. The nitrogen family will form ions with a negative three charge. In all cases, they'll be adding electrons to attain the noble gas electron configuration.